What's good, family? It's your girl, Miss Giselle. And today we have none other than the great Kenny the Plug in the building. What's good with you? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well, Queen. Thank you for having me here with you today. Absolutely. It's all about you guys. It's all about loving on our Black men for February. This is our love month. And here at the Black Table, we are starting out February Black History Month with the head of the Black family. And everything is all about Black men. And we're trying to recognize the Black men who are creating Black history today. So we are so excited to have you. I'm so excited to have you here today. And let's get it rocking. So what, you got any big plans for the weekend? Um, uh, not, not too many big plans. Uh, this week was, was kind of hectic. I had a lot of things going on. So I kind of want to use this weekend to be able to finally relax and unwind, you know, get good and hydrated, get some rest, finally get a full night's sleep, you know. So this weekend, not too much, not too much going on. Maybe catch a couple games, you know, nothing too big. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I'm so glad that you're allowing us to, you know, host you, well, allowing me right now to host you on our platform. And um, with that said, tell us a little bit about Mr. Kenny the Plug. Tell us about um, well, um, for myself, uh, it's been a, it's been, you know, I grew up like a lot of people with um, dreams and aspirations of being a professional athlete, um, and so it it took me to the level of actually, you know, getting several Division One scholarship offers. I actually went to. College at Oklahoma State, played football there. Um, and it, it, it made me come to a realization because I actually suffered an injury. And it was like a career ending injury. I tore my Achilles uh, twice in the span of two months. So it really made me have like an eye opening moment. And that eye opening moment, you know, for a lot of people, that that's like a it's like a, it's an identity crisis, right? Because you've been, you know, people who take it, who make it to that level playing sports, they, you know, they've, they've that's been the, the driver of their personality, you know, the circles of people they hung out with, you know what I mean? Like, right. and I think with the, in, within a culture, um, within the culture, it, it's a lot of what we think is our importance, right? Our athleticism, right? We're athletes, you know? But it, 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 what it did for me is it allowed me to understand that I had more gifts that were probably a lot more helpful to other people besides just being able to jump and being able to run. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that was that. And then it, 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 it allowed me to discover my passion in writing. You know, that's one thing we both share. We both share a, a passion and desire uh, to write and to get our message across. And, and it, it allowed me to get into my emotions. But one thing it really did is it, it made me realize that I had never, I was 22 years old and I had never read a book from cover to cover. Never. I was 22 years old. And so I know um, it, it, what it did for me is it kind of, it sparked a fear in me. I'm like, wow, I'm 20 years old. And I, I, so I started to read and I started to get really hungry about just trying to understand how life works because I don't really look at life through the lens of an athlete. And I think that's something that a lot of people in the culture can relate to, right? Because we are so gifted in all these ways. And a lot of times our athleticism, our athleticism can be blinding because we're so athletically gifted and we think that's all we can do. And so I was one of those people. I put all my eggs in the athlete basket. You know, they always tell you, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. I put all my eggs in the athletic basket and it didn't pay off. But it allowed me to start asking myself more meaningful questions. You know, what, what am I doing here? What other gifts do I have besides being able to jump high and being able to lift weights and things like that? And then I started to discover that um, writing and, and being a salesperson, I feel like I was like, man, like there's this whole uh, attribute with the athlete, athletes and sales that kind of go together. So that's kind of got me to a place where I'm at now, where it's like, man, a lot of those gifts that I've discovered after post football has kind of allowed me to get into a sales role now, where um, it's entrepreneurship and being able to tell stories. Absolutely, 
Oh, well, that's dope. And see, I have a son who's an athlete. My oldest son, everything about him right now is God and basketball. That's his everything. So with him, that's my oldest son. And I told him, I was like, you can do it all within that space. Even if you don't become a basketball player professionally, you could be the a agent. You can be a coach. You can do so many di different things in the athletic area. And I think a lot of people, it has become a cliche because so many young black boys specifically aspire to be athletes because that's who they're told is the greatest. You know, look, try to be like them because it's the only thing that kind of embraces that area of masculinity without being intimidating to other people. Like they always like, oh, you know, I'm, um, you know, well, I'm an athlete, so I have to be aggressive like this, but I'm really, right. but I'm like, I don't mind. I like the fact, I don't like the diffuse, I don't like for Black men to lose their masculinity. You're the epitome of that. So I kind of make, like, I have my sons embrace that part of themselves. Now, not saying they can't cry. That's the biggest thing. I'm like, you, you have access to all of that. Just, you know, just love on what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Now, as far as my son with his um, being an athlete, like right now, he's an honor roll student. It took a little, it took a long time for us to get to that point. We're talking about for the last two years, he's been on the honor roll consistently. And like, he has a different drive and he's like kind of like trying to focus on his purpose. So when he hear people like you speak, like there are options after, you know, after college ball, after high school ball and stuff like that, if you don't go all the way, you can pivot and still do what you love just in a different way. And you could probably find things out about yourself that you wouldn't have found out otherwise. So I really like, I like that. So that's, that's what's dope about you. Now, um, with your platform right now, because I see you getting some momentum from a special place that mm -hmm. we'll say right now, right. but it's definitely a special place that I can't wait for everyone to have access to. Let's talk about how you're pivoting into the market field when helping other businesses. Yeah, yeah, that platform, I think uh, we'll look back at this video and it'll be like, man, like, it, we are, well, I, I'll make sure that I can make this as relevant as I can to people who may not have the ability to be on the platform now. But I think a lot of people, you know, with the pandemic and everything that's happening right now, a lot of people who may have not, maybe they've worked in a nine to five and maybe they're finally venturing out into seeing what is up with this entrepreneur thing? What is up with this having your own business and being your own boss and controlling your own schedule? And so there's a lot of things that go along with that. And not only that, but you have social media, right? How does your business communicate with social media? Does it? You know what I mean? Well, if you if your business can be um, benefited by social media, how? How? How do you, um, you know, get your business, um, you know, operating in a conjunction with the social media in a way where you could be successful or more successful. So it's a lot of questions that a lot of new entrepreneurs are asking. And me, myself, having failed and been successful in several different businesses on my own, um, you kind of start to catch different trends and different patterns, right? Nothing's ever the same. No two businesses, even though they sell the same product, are the same, but right. there are different patterns that you start to see right absolutely there's certain, right there's certain pit, pitfalls that you get into that you start to talk to other entrepreneurs and like oh yeah i remember that same problem too where you get this extreme burst of excitement when you first start your business and then when you start to do kind of the things that are less exciting you don't still have that same excitement right so you have to try to figure out how to continue yeah, to stay stay interested with, with that process, even though you're doing something that might not necessarily be as exciting or stimulating. Um, so what I've noticed now is like, okay, we have these platforms, we have Instagram, we have the other platform that's really, really powerful. And people will be able to uh, understand that they'll be in connection to other people that have like also mine. started their- Like mine. Right. right. And I think that that's, and not to cut you off or anything like that, but that right there, 
platforms with like-minded individuals. Like if someone posts an article, you're gonna have different perspectives. And sometimes those perspectives cause arguments, et cetera. But sometimes you wanna be in a space where people who are on the same, at least the same thought process, you don't have to agree with everything, but at least think that, you know, or have the ability to think outside of the box. Some people are, they restrict themselves to what they're told, you know? Some people do that, but I like the special platform that we're talking about because if you don't like what people are talking about here, you could go somewhere else. You can kind of control what you're listening to. You can control the conversations you're having and the, the spaces that you allow yourself to go into. So that's powerful. It's like the wild, wild west right now when it comes to social media and actually using it to build up platforms or build up um, businesses. It's so many powerful businesses that I've encountered through IG, the special website, Facebook, et cetera. And I probably would have never bought into these businesses otherwise. And I think that's what's making the business sector so like it's in limbo because you have these big businesses who literally shut down. They say it's because due to economics, but people are paying more into smaller businesses, more into people who are personal to them, people that, you know, my cousin sells this, let me go to that place. Or um, a friend of mine told me about this restaurant, let me try this one out. And so like big businesses are trying to figure out how to compete with the smaller businesses. COVID kind of put a damper on a lot of restaurants because restaurants for the biggest part, they had the biggest momentum. And um, they're the ones who, you know, they were really impacted. Yes, they were impacted the most and they gave them the least, I feel like. And people like like big businesses, I won't say the names, they were taking so much money from the funds that the smaller businesses didn't reap the rewards as much as they could have. But it's okay. We know what happened, but we're not going to allow that to destroy what we have possible now. I feel like we're walking into a new age. Anything that's dying is going to have chaos. Like look at the birthing process. You have the three trimesters and then the birthing process is turmoil. And so we're going through that birthing process. You're going to have people that are going to assimilate. You're going to have people who are going to rise above it and just do things that are just unthinkable. And then you got, you're going to have people that fall below and you're going to have to figure out where do you want to find yourself in that space? So I would love to talk to you again. We probably can talk about just like some things that you do that you can share as far as marketing tools. We could probably do something else like later on in the year, once I get to the family business, because May is about family business. February is all about you guys. And I've seen you lift up so many people You've hosted um, panels where people have become um, uplifted. You've gotten businesses in contact with one another. So with that said, um, we definitely can go somewhere in the future. I'm going to definitely invite you back to the table. But um, what would you say, what's, your, what's next for you? What's next for you? Um, what's next for me is me continuously building a family. Uh, of successful entrepreneurs, especially a part of the culture. I think there's a lot of people in different pockets of the country, different pockets of the world. They're thinking that they're alone in these very creative and very innovative thoughts. And I wanna be able to connect those pockets of people together and create a family atmosphere, right? Where, um, where I do uh, really take advantage of social media and really give them the opportunity to tell their stories. You know, there's people in places you know, we've never been to before, never even heard of before that have so many other powers and tools and gifts and skills and, and businesses that we don't know, but they're out there thinking that they're alone, right? And so I just want to kind of find a way to connect those dots and create a platform and other platforms for them to be able to have that family atmosphere within a social media where people might feel kind of lonely. You know what I mean? I completely agree. I love it, actually, because it's enough room at the top. We're always told it's not enough room at the top. Fact is, I think with us, we're individuals who all have special gifts. So we all kind of 
we're like trees. Like if you look at the trees, well, when they exhale, we inhale. When we inhale, they exhale. So we all bounce off of each other like that. So just, I think with us recognizing that and knowing that, you know what, this person has a gift that I can use for like something to help me or I can help them in a way. With us going back to that way of life, I think it's going to transition how we communicate as humans. I don't care what race you are at that point, how we communicate is going to be different. But right now, specifically rebuilding the Black family is, is going to be important because that's where I, I feel like I can't, we can't make it to that next level until we're healed here. And it's going to take, of course, more than conversations, but getting people in contact with the right people or letting people see, hey, it's Black people in the midst of this pandemic who are doing great things, who are changing lives. And no, that stigma about Black men, that's not relevant. That's not, that's not actually factual. Once we start saying, changing that stigma, the whole, the fatherless homes, it's a lot of them, but it's a whole lot of Black men who are holding it down, taking care of their families. Me and my child's father, we're not together, but I promise you one thing, he makes sure that my children are taken care of. I can call him in the middle of the night and he will make sure they have what they need. So I think we have to understand, like we have different dynamics of families going on, but we also have to heal so that everybody can work together and lift each other up at that point. Mm -hmm. but yeah. and, I also, and I also think that um, the conversation, the narrative, like we don't necessarily have to buy into the narrative that they, whoever they are, are talking about, right? As long as we know what the vision we have is within our hearts and within our community and everybody plays their role. Like you said, it's a tree. So within the tree, there's branches, you know what I mean? And each person has a very important role within the, the uplift and the upbuild and the strengthening of the community. Yes. And so, and so we don't have to convince them or they or whoever that is of anything. We just have to stay true to what we know that we are on a very deep level and, and continue to just, you know, help each other. Absolutely. We have revolutionaries out there like Tariq Nasheed on the front line. We have, um, uh, what is it? Um, I forget the guy's name. He has the Black Channel. Um, I, don't about Robert? Oh, I don't remember his name. Oh, okay. No, you're Black Channel. About, you're about. Mm -hmm. It's like he says some harsh, like it's some harsh truths. Like it's, a lot of people don't want to face those realities, but he's, he hits the nail on the head. I know he went around doing campaigns putting billboards all over the place, just highlighting certain things in the community, things like that. He's adding to it. You got people on the front line. You got like Jade Arndale, who goes to a lot of these protests and participate in a lot of things with different organizers around the country who are lifting people up. You got people like Sister Vicki Dillard, who goes online and she highlights a lot of things and she keeps the open discussion, exposes these you know, the devilish ways and the things that's going on. You got Dr. Um, Boyce Watkins getting people financially free. Like my children actually take his financial literacy courses through the, um, the Black Business School. My kids are learning to invest. They're learning to build businesses. That's why I told you, each one of my children have a business platform. It don't have to be specifically social media, but they all have business platforms. I've been doing it with them since... I started listening to Dr. Boyce to keep it real. You have the doctor, you have Dr. Claude Anderson, who has gone above and beyond for decades lifting people up. You got Louis Farrakhan, who is not afraid to um, you know, speak the truth. We got, I don't care what people feel about other things behind the scenes. I'm talking about the real concrete things that you see that these people have done in society and have changed is everybody is working cohesive um like in a cohesive way and it's nothing that can break that so it's just us finding our place in that part and then once we get there then we can get everything else together with every other space mm -hmm. i think that's it's going to take for us to build and, and we're in that building space right now we're in the birth of the birth and age now with that said what would you leave what would you like to leave with other like youth between youth I have a platform, it's just like a small club that I run, it's Black Parents United. And we talk about just different things, or even with different ways to maneuver through this um, 
through this, you know, the pandemic, how, how is parenting? What are you doing, you know, to improve your parenting, stuff like that. It's just conversations with parents because we need our spaces so that we can start preparing our kids to carry the torch to the next level. So what would you say, like, what would you like to leave to the parents, to the youth, to the activists, et cetera? I would say I think it's excellent that you are getting your sons and your children prepared to have the entrepreneurial uh, mindset and business, having them start their own business, run their own business, be successful in that way. I would also challenge parents to think about think about uh, business, but in terms of the future and think about the different skills that they could have. That, um, that they can teach, right? So for instance, you have, uh, you know, because it's becoming such a digital world, you want to be able to understand uh, how to not only know how to build websites, but be able to teach websites, right? Because if you could teach people how to build websites, then therefore you can um, make up you can make a course or you can make eBooks, you know? So that's, that's passive income. That's money coming in every single month and they don't have to absolutely do anything but check their account, right? So that, so, that, so what about, um, or instead of like even podcasts like you're doing here, like not only run a podcast, but it's important that people also can learn from you about how to run a podcast, right? Because that's two different incomes, right? You have income uh, having and hosting a podcast, but then you also have one with the knowledge of what it takes because there's a lot of people out there who have amazing brands and they would love to be able to, um, you know, learn the ins and outs, all the details about how you started it, what microphone do you use, what kind of camera, what's the lighting, what settings are, you know, all these kind of things that you know that is actually more digital knowledge, right? You can make a course, you can make an ebook, you can run classes about all these different things. So I would challenge parents to not only have their kids um, start a business, but also have them challenge them to learn something that they can become an expert in, that people will be more than willing to happily pay for their access to that knowledge. I agree, I love that. And thank you so much for dropping all of those jewels you know, you and I, we're going to be talking anyway later on, but I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for stopping playing the Black Table. Your presence is always welcome, and it is a grace. We do appreciate that. And with that said, ladies, gentlemen, kings, queens, thank you for tuning in. Until yeah. next time, peace. Thank you. Peace. Bye.